All right, so welcome. Uh, I'm Alicia. I'm on NMDC. Um, Montana and Julia are here. They're also on the NMDC project, so they can help field any questions. Um, and we're going to talk about exploring NEON data with NMDC tools. Um, can people use this, the uh, the Zoom reactions to um, say whether or not you know what the NMDC is? <laughs> Montana, you know what the NMDC is? <laughs> I had to find my button. <laughs> um, well, for those of you who don't, you hopefully will know more after. Um, does that, has anyone here worked with Neon Data before? All right. Um, does your lab collect standardized metadata if you do lab work? Uh, and so one of the main reasons NMDC exists is um, is use, reusing metadata is hard. So has anyone else, has anyone here ever tried to reuse someone else's data? And uh, <laughs> thumbs up or thumbs down. How did that go for people? <laughs> so we're getting a thumbs down. We're getting a surprise face, <laughs> a cold, a cold face. So in general, um, it can be challenging to reuse someone else's data. That's part of what an NMDC is hoping to make less painful. Um, so the agenda today is we're going to talk about what the NMDC is and talk about our data portal, which is one of our web UI applications. Um, then there'll be a, a 30 minutes, probably 20 minutes to do it and 10 minutes to go over a data portal activity um, where we'll look for data on the data portal. And then we will talk about retrieving metadata programmatically via the API. And then there's 30 minutes at the end for a discussion, questions, feedback. Um, since the group is pretty small, we could definitely adjust this if, if um, people have different interests, but this is, this is the agenda that we put together. So after the seminar, you'll be able to understand how NEON and NMDC are collaborating to improve FAIR data what the NMDC offers, uh, why FAIR metadata is important, and where to find NEON data on the NMDC data portal and the NMDC API. These are the, uh, this is just kind of a reference slide. These are the two resources we'll be talking about today. So the data portal and then the API for programmatic access. So now I'll talk a little bit about what NMDC is and uh, what we're doing with metadata. So the NMDC is a sustainable data discovery platform. We're really focused on fair data. So making data findable, interoperable, uh, reusable. Um, and we're three national labs that have come together to do this. We're in the fourth year of, of the project and we're really focused on enabling people to find multi-omics microbiome data so the vision of NMDC is to connect data, people, and ideas to advance microbiome discovery. And we're doing that through infrastructure, standards, and community building. There's three product initiatives underpinned by an engagement strategy. So Montana Smith is on the line and she is the lead for the submission portal. So that's a UI where you can enter information about your study and the biosamples that you've collected in a standardized format. Julia is online. She's the product owner of NMDC Edge. And she and this is a, a UI where you could run the standardized workflows. I'm the product owner for the data portal. And so that's a place 
uh, where you can access and discover microbiome information. We have a couple really key partnerships. So we work really closely with the Joint Genome Institute and EMSL. Those are two Department of Energy facilities that generate a lot of the omics data. So JGI generates a lot of the sequencing-based data and EMSL generates a lot of the mass spec data. We have two engagement programs, the Champions Program and the Ambassadors Program. And we work with people to improve data standards. Sometimes these folks host workshops for NMDC tools. There, there can be funding to travel to conferences. So if you're interested in, in information about that, Julia can field any questions there. And then we have a number of key strategic partnerships. What we're gonna focus on today is the partnership with NEON. Now I'll talk about our data portal and how we're using it for data discovery. So meta, Metadata standards are important because data, it's difficult to reuse data from different labs if they're not using consistent field names, uh, measurements, or units are unspecified or terms are not being consistently used. So part of what NMDC does is makes terms, field names, units, et cetera, consistent. Uh, so data comes in and is formatted to be consistent via the submission portal. And then that data, which is now consistent, is then discoverable within our data portal. This is just a screenshot of what the portal looks like. And then we'll walk through some of the features uh, to describe them in more detail so that you guys can do the scavenger hunt activity. So on the left panel is a fa faceted search option. So there's several pieces of information that you can look on. Some of the popular and very basic information that you could sort on is information on the samples. So things like the depth that the sample was collected from, when the sample was collected, geographic location, either by latitude longitude search or by the location name. We also have a map feature where you could zoom in on different areas and then click search this region and that would populate the latitude longitude coordinates. We have a keg search for, for functional search. So you could enter in the name of a keg term or type in an enzyme name and then select from a dropdown. This would return uh, metagenome, metatranscriptome or metaproteomics records that have a hit to the keg term. There's two different systems that we use to support kind of habitat or environmental information. The gold pathways is a five level system that's from JGI. Um, so a subset of the samples do have this information populated. And then we also support th a three level system to, to provide environmental context terms. These terms are required by the Genome Standards Consortia, which is a body that governs um, metadata requirements about genomics information. And so we also require this. So this will be available. This is available for every sample and you can search on this. This is really useful for searching across studies or subsetting data within a study. You could search by what type of omics data you have. So there's a couple different options here. On the left panel, you could search by the omics type. This is going to be an or query. So if you said you wanted metagenome and natural organic matter, it would be the, the superset of both of those types. On the right, we have an upset plot, and this is going to be an and query. So 134 samples have both metagenome data and natural organic matter data. Below kind of the map and the collection date filters is going to be information on the NMGC studies. So you can click on this button here to filter records that are only part of this study. Or you could click on this arrow over here and that would lead you to a detailed study page which has quite a bit of information. So if we go there, um, this is an example of the study page. So it has a title, 
a description. This has what type of omics data it has and how many of those it has. There's information on who's in charge of the project. We have links out to some of the NEON resources, who's on the team. We have persistent identifiers throughout NMDC. So we create identifiers from everything from studies, biosamples, um, workflow runs, and then uh, identifiers for files that get created as the output of workflow runs. Information on funding, sample counts, um, if there's things like related publications, et cetera, links to other resources. Um, if you scroll down below the studies, you'll see the samples that are part of that study. So similarly, you could click on this and navigate to the sample details page, or you could click here and that would expand and show you the output from the workflow results from uh, to, that analyzes the metagenome raw data. So here's an example of a samples page. You could see basic information about latitude, longitude, when it was collected, what the environmental context terms are. Over here, we have a field called biosample categories. So we do have some studies within NMDC where the samples come from NEON sites, but weren't collected by the NEON organization. So other PIs are, have come onto a NEON site and done some of their own sampling. So you might be interested in all of the samples that are from NEON sites, regardless of omics type, or regardless of who collected the samples. And this would be one way where you could um, return those samples. Neon, neon soil sampling protocol pulls samples at a plot level. Um, so they have 40 by 40 meter plots on different sites and they take one to three cores, divide them by the soil horizon layer into mineral or organic and then pool them. And so what we listed here is this is the biosample and these are the two other biosamples that are from that plot that got pooled together for the metagenomics analysis. We click to expand and see some of the workflow data. You can see what, um, what type of workflow this was. So here we're doing read quality filtering, metagenome assembly, annotation. We also do a wreath-based taxonomy analysis. So you could download workflow data here. This is supposed to make the data more accessible. Not everyone has access to some of the compute resources that are required to analyze metagenome data. And so if you wanted to, you could put in whatever filtering you wanted, and then you could download, download that data via the UI. This, I'll walk through an example of just like what some of the counts look like and what they mean on the data portal. So things hopefully make a little bit more sense as we're doing the exercise. So here we've applied a latitude longitude search for Hawaii and 90 is the number of samples. So everything here, the, fa the faceted search is always first gonna return the number of samples. So, and this is the same in, in the map. Um, up here's the number of metagenomics records that are associated with those samples. So this should be about three to one. This is the number of samples that use that omics type or that combination of omics type. So in this example, we only have metagenome results. Down below is gonna be the number of studies that have samples from this region. And then here is a separated by each study and omics type, how many metagenome records are there. This up here is how you're gonna clear your search filter. So you would just click on this icon and that would that's gonna reset the data portal. 
this is going to be important in the data portal activity. Um, and now it's time for the activity. Um, so there's a, a QR code, or you can follow the link. Um, this is the, the link to the data portal. And then this is the link, um, the link in the QR code for the questions that we're trying to answer. Um, so we're gonna probably take about maybe 20 minutes to do this. Um, and then we'll go through the answers. Um, or we could kind of go through it together. I know there's only a handful of people here. Um, does anyone have a preference of kind of doing this together versus individually? I think with a small group, maybe it makes sense to do it together. Okay. Um, so let's go. Oops. Um, pull up the questions. So these are our questions. Um, and then I'll just kind of, I guess, toggle back and forth. So, um, there's three neon data products that have metagenomics. Uh, so there's soil metagenomes, benthic metagenomes, and surface water metagenomes. And NMDC is currently hosting the soil metagenomes and the benthic samples. And then we're working on getting the surface water samples in. So this exercise primarily focuses on the soil samples because that's what the um, science talk was on last month. So the first question is gonna be how many samples are from the study entitled uh, National Ecological Observatory Network Soil Metagenomes. And then this is the, the NEON data product ID. So I'm just gonna highlight this, go over to set this here. Um, so I'm just gonna go over here, see if I can find the right study. So I scroll down, it has selected this, it's filtering for this study. Um, and so this is gonna be the number of samples, so 4,443 samples are associated with this study. Um, a couple of the samples I think failed in library construction or whatever. So the number in the upset plot here is gonna be a little bit different. Um, so there's 4,411 records that are associated, samples that are associated with the metagenomics sequencing record. Then next... Alicia, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, What's that 1560 number that appears with the study? Because it looks like that's not the number of samples. This is the number of metagenome records. So this is, uh, so if we, if we look back at the, what happens with the pooling, mm -hmm. one to three samples, typically three samples per site get combined together for the sequencing. Okay. So that's what this count is. Okay, but then the, the system retains the fact that those came from multiple samples and that's Correct. why the sample yeah. number is higher. Okay. So if you if you look at this record, this is, um, and you click on the sample, you can see this is the sample and this is the other sample that got combined with it. So the way NEON names their samples for the soil samples is it's the site, the plot, whether it's mineral or organic horizon from the from the core. And then these are X, Y coordinates within the plot and then the collection date. So you, you can see here that the site's the same, the plot's the same, the soil horizon's the same, but they're there's different they're different coordinates within the plot. And then they have the same collection date. So these are 
these two samples were pulled together yep and the dna was extracted a library was made and then sequencing was done cool thank you um so here you can also see that this is the uh this is the analyzed data so then we picked up neon's raw sequencing metadata sorry raw sequencing files ran quality filtering assembly etc so this is the sample that this is for but this is the other sample that's in there so based on the nmdc identifier but if you click on this you would get to the other this is the other study the other sample page but they're linked so this is it's kind of nice to be able to to see um, how the how the records tie together. Any questions on that? Okay, so we have four thousand four hundred and forty three. That's the answer for that. Um, oops, let's see. Um, what type of omics data? does NMDC has, have for this study? So there's a couple different ways we could look at this. Um, we can just look here and see there's only metagenomes um, or over here, metagenomes or um, up here in the bar chart. So it, it filters out and there's no match for the other omics types that we host. Um, or you could go down here to omics type and also see that there's only metagenome data. The next question is, what instrument types were used to generate the data for that study? So we're gonna go back here. And one of the things that you can filter on is the instrument name. So if we click on instrument name, it's gonna show the different instrument types that were used. So uh, there, it's been sequenced on three different Illumina platforms. So Net, NextSeq, NovaSeq, and HiSeq. These are the, the samples that were most recently sequenced at JGI. So these are of much higher depth. Um, so therefore have like larger assemblies and are gonna have more metagenome bins. Um, So we're going to look up what the environmental local environmental context term is for one of the neon samples. Uh, so if we scroll down and we go back to one of the samples we were looking at. Um, so we use these are terms um, specified the, by the Genome Standards Consortium. It uses the ENVO ontology primarily. Um, which isn't what NEON used, uses natively. And so what we've done is we've created a mapping table between the national land cover database terms that NEON uses and the ENVO terms. And then that makes the habitat descriptions, descriptive terms interoperable with all the other samples that we have. Um, so here are the environmental local context is area of evergreen forest. So everything's labeled as a terrestrial biome. All of the soil samples are labeled as soil and then their local envir environmental context term is gonna be different depending on um, where the sample was collected. Uh, and then we learned about the related samples. So what samples are related to, to that sample? Um, so in this case, there's one other related sample. It's the other one from the same plot. So now the next question is to get the NMDC study identifier for for this so we would want to go over as well as the funding source so we'd go over to the study page so there's a couple of different ways you could do this we could go back um to where we were to the main um landing page or 
this the study identifiers are listed here and this is a link out to the study details page. I click here. Uh, so this is the NMDC identifier for this study. And then this is the, um, the NSF grant number. All right, so now we'll walk through an example of using the some of the map and geographic location features. So how many samples are from Puerto Rico? So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna clear all of my search by clicking up here. Uh, and then I like to use the map feature. So I just zoom in on Puerto Rico. You can see that there's a couple different places where we have samples from on Puerto Rico, but to say search this region. And you can see that there's uh, 364 samples that are from Puerto Rico um, from two different omics types. So this is, uh, we have metagenome data, and then we also have natural organic matter data. We scroll down, we can uh, find out that these are from four different studies. So um, GROW is a project to catalog uh, watersheds uh, globally. And so there's, we have two metagenomes and, and 10 natural organic matter um, projects. This is a, a project to study uh, carbon, carbon redox in um, a, a forest in Puerto Rico. And then uh, these, they're samples from both neon benthic samples and neon soil metagenomes. So I think the next question was how many of those samples are from uh, how many of the samples from Puerto Rico are neon soil samples. So to do that, we would click back over and then just click here to apply this study as a filter. You can see it adds it as a filter up here. And then our results drop down to 194 samples. So 194 soil samples from Puerto Rico. All right, um, next we're gonna look at some other studies. So we're gonna look at um, this study, which looks at permafrost in Alaska. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna clear all the search terms. Um, and then I'm just gonna search for the study title. Um, so this is our study, select it. Um, I think the question was what type of omics data do we have? So this is natural organic matter. We have 241. Um, it's one to one here, the samples to the um, the data, the instrument data. Um, and then if we click on one of these samples, we'll be able to figure out whether or not it's from neon. So this is not a neon, this is not a neon data product. Um, so this is an individual PI. But um, they are doing sampling from a neon site. So you can see that from the biosample categories. Uh, and then the last question was just to figure out how many samples of an environmental, local environmental context of area of evergreen forest. So if we go back to the main page, clear all of our searches. Um, so we would go to the ENVO section and then look, uh, click on local environmental context and put in the term. 
and there's uh, 1,266 samples that are that have this environmental local context. Um, from a couple different studies, which is kind of fun. Um, so that's the end of the the training on the data portal. Were there any questions before we talk a little bit about the UI? All right. This is great. I, I didn't realize that um, the samples that were collected at NEON sites, but not by NEON, were labeled that way. So that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, this is something that, that uh, we did for ESA. And actually, I'll show you. Um, there's no way currently right now to search to get all of these via the uh, UI, but we I will show you how to do it with the API. Um, all right, so I'll go through the API slides and then we'll we can goof around a little bit with that. Um, so back to the back to the slides. Um, so API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's just an intermediate so that you don't have to know what the technology stack is on the back end. It's a pretty common analogy online from what I found that um, this is like comparable to going to a restaurant and talking to giving the, your order to the waiter and then the waiter communicates with the kitchen and then the waiter brings back your order. So it's just an intermediate layer that is consistent and that you can, you can access programmatically. This is how you can get to the NMDC API. So there's a web link and the QR code. The Swagger UI does have some auto-generated documentation that can be pretty minimal. So we've also put together some more user-friendly kind of written by a human documentation with some examples that might help you if you're, if you're having some questions. Um, and then depending on what kind of endpoint it is, those are color coded and that's kind of just automatic. Um, so get endpoints are used to retrieve records. So that's mostly what we're interested in today. Internally, we also have some post endpoints where we can upload information when we're adding records, our biosample records, workflow records, et cetera. Um, but we're gonna focus on some of the get endpoints today. So a couple of the ones that we might be interested in are endpoints about studies and or biosamples. So uh, these two endpoints here specifically like just take an identifier. And then these two endpoints are, you have to know a little bit more about how you might wanna query those. So here's one of the, the study endpoints. We can take the study ID that we got from the data portal exercise, put it in here, um, and then get all the metadata back about the study. So you could come in here, there's a button over here that says try it out. You would put in the study ID, click execute, and then it would return um, a document, a JSON document. Um, and then you can you could download that or you can use curl or Python request library or R, whatever, whatever your preferred choice is. Here's an example that's a little bit more complicated. Um, so part of is how we aggregate, is how we say that biosamples come from a certain study. So if we were looking for all of the all of the samples that came from the NEON soil study. This is what the query would look like for this endpoint. So you would say part of colon and then the NMDC study. And you would get back um, a JSON document that had some metadata and then some results. So this says what the filter is. This is how many samples there are. So this matches what the data portal, what we found in the data portal. 
And then by default, it's going to return 25 records. You can change this if you want. Um, so you might have to do some paging. So you'll see an example of that um, in the Jupyter Notebook that we'll go over. And then in the, in the results is where the first 25 records are. And then you would have to keep fetching them. Uh, Claire, this is what I was talking about. So this is if we wanted to look at a different study or just in general, look at any samples that come from NEON sites. Um, on our end that you would use the a field name of biosample categories and then a value of NEON to do that. Here I've intersected it with a search on another study. So I got the identifier for a, the Thousand Soils research campaign. This was a project out of EMSL to catalog some soil samples across the US. It was a pilot study for um, a new a new call that they have called Monet, which is to uh, catalog soil samples across the US. Um, so you could do this as a as a combined query or just use the second part of it. But um, how we're going to do a more complicated query here is you just connect them with a comma. So here we're looking at um, for samples that are part of this thousand soils study um, that have a neon biosample categories of neon. So this would return all the records just from this study. If we just put in the second half, oops, if we just put in the second half, it would retrieve any samples from any studies that are from neon sites. Um, the NMDC schema is written in a, a framework called LinkML. In the lingo, the terminology is a little bit different. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit, but there's some really nice documentation where if you were using the API and you get your JSON back and you're not sure what some of the field names mean, you could come in here to look up the documentation. So you would just um, come to the repository's documentation page and type in what the field was, and then you could learn more about that. The LinkML nomenclature is slot, so that maps to what you would call like a field in a JSON document. So here I've pulled up the documentation about pH so we can just see what this kind of looks like. So if this is a JSON record for a bio sample from Thousand Soils that's from NEON, it has a pH of 6.5. Um, so let's say we're interested in learning more about how NMDC defines pH. This is a pretty basic field, but it's just illustrative. So uh, over here would be the what the slot name is, the pH. Below that is the description for the slot. Here, the applicable, applicable classes would tell you what type of records this, this slot applies to. So here it uh, applies to biosamples. And then you could look up if there's any restrictions on what the value is under properties. So maybe this needs to be a Boolean or, you know, an integer or a string or, or whatever. Uh, so now we'll hop over and look at what kind of putting together the API with um, using Python and a Jupyter notebook. So the question that we're going to try and answer is, do the mineral or the organic soil horizon samples have a higher pH at the Wind River Experimental Forest? which is in Washington. So I've put a, a link, tiny link here. So this is one of the Jupyter notebooks that was developed internally by NMDC staff. There, there's not enough time today for us to um, kind of write this together. And so this is kind of mocked up, but gives you some idea of how, um, how you could use the API and co combined with Jupyter notebooks just wanted to note that you could also do this with the NEON R packages, but we just wanted to illustrate how you would do this using NMDC directly. Um, and then there are going to be some things um, 
like the workflow results, those are those are hosted in NMDC and um, been pushed over to JGI. Um, so there are some things where um, currently the NEON R packages wouldn't be able to provide the information. But for this, you could definitely use the R packages. So this is just illustrative. Um, so you would, you know, import a bunch of packages, including the, this is the Python library to, um, to be able to make API requests. This is what your API request would look like. So this is the, the base API URL. Uh, this is what you're filtering on the name, study, study name. You're filtering on the neon data product ID. Um, And then um, here we're like looping through, remember I was saying that there's a max number of records that get returned. So we're doing this in a while loop um, to fetch all the records. Um, and then we're parsing through and getting the geographic location name. So if we scroll down a little bit, um, we can get to the map. So this is, this is pre-populated, but um, it's, it's rather complicated, um, but um, so if we zoom in on Washington, there's two sites, so we'll have to click and see which one is Wind River, did I get this right? Abbey Road, no, that's not the site we want, this is, so this is the site that we were interested in. So Wind River Experimental Forest. Um, and we've plotted the pH over time. So by the collection date and then colored it by the soil horizon. Um, so here you can see that in general, the mineral horizon samples have a higher pH. Any questions? Okay, let me switch back over. Um, so here, and I was able to export um, that plot and copy it in here. Um, but you could look at, you know, other sites. Um, you can do whatever you want in the Jupyter Notebook. This is a link to the repository, the NMDC repository that has some of these notebooks. Um, so if you wanted to look at the Ju Jupyter notebooks that are, that are um, pre-run, pre pre-compiled, you could do those here, or you could open them in a Google Collab notebook yourself. Um, if you wanted to make edits, you would have to clone the repo and, and, uh, and go from there. So that's kind of all that I had. Um, and now we have time for questions, discussion. We do have a survey um, that we hope you'll take. Um, if you have feedback um, to let us know what you learned, what you thought was valuable, what else you'd like to see from the NMDC NEON collaboration. So let's see who's, there's a couple people here from the NMDC team. Um, so Montana's here. I mentioned she's in charge of the submission portal. Julia is in charge of NMDC Edge. And then Catherine and Bryn um, did most of the Jupyter Notebooks. Um, so any of us could field questions. <laughs>